In this first video, we're going to go through the mathematical symbols that we are going to be using in CV398. Sets are the building blocks of everything that we do. Sets are defined using curly brackets. For example, the set A is equal to the elements 1, 2, and 3. The set B is equal to the elements 2 and 3. The symbol element of is used to designate elements of sets. For example, 1 is an element of A, 3 is an element of A, 3 is an element of B. The symbol subset of is used to define or to show that one set is a subset of another. For example, the set B has elements 2 and 3, the set A has elements 1, 2 and 3. All the elements of B already exist in A, so we can say that B is a subset of A. Note, we cannot say that B is an element of A. This is not correct. Similarly, we cannot also say that 1 is a subset of A. Again, this is incorrect. However, we can say that the set that contains the element 1 is a subset of A. This is a correct way for using subset. Another convenient way of defining sets is by defining the properties of the elements of the set. For example, we can say that C is the set containing the elements X, and then we say something about the properties of X. In this particular example, X is an element of A or X is an element of B, which means that in this particular example, C is equal to all the elements that are in A or B, and so we have here 1 and 2 and 3. Similarly, we can say D is the set that, uh, whose elements are of the form Y, such that we, after that vertical line we define the properties of what Y is, and here Y is a day of the week, so D would be the set of all the days in the week. The Gothic letter N is reserved for the set of natural numbers, the numbers that are used for counting, starting from 1. So the set of natural numbers are of 1, 2, 3, and so on. The Gothic letter Z is reserved for the set of integers, which are the set of natural numbers, the counting numbers, in addition to 0, in addition to the negative of the counting numbers as well. The Gothic letter Q is reserved for the set of rational numbers, which are the numbers that can be written as a fraction of integers. So Q in this case is equal to a fraction a over b, a and b are integers, and note that b cannot be equal to zero. The gothic letter r is reserved to define the set of real numbers, the uh, real numbers between negative infinity and infinity, and note that the real numbers contains the rational numbers and irrational numbers. For example, root 2 cannot be written as a fraction. Root 2 is a real number, but not a rational number. Intervals of real numbers are defined using square and round brackets. Square brackets are used to include the end of the interval. Open brackets is used to exclude the end of the interval. For example, the interval 0, 1 with closed 0 and open 1 means that it's all the natural numbers, all the real numbers between 0 and 1, including 0 and excluding 1. The interval 0, 1 with closed 0 and closed 1 is all the real numbers between 0 and 1, including 0 and including 1. The open interval 0, closed 1 is the interval that contains that with all the numbers, all the real numbers between 0 and 1, excluding 0 and including 1. The open interval 0, 1 is the interval of all the real numbers between 0 and 1, excluding 0 and excluding 1. There are three additional symbols that will be used throughout. The first one is for all, the second one is exists, and the third one is exists and unique. Exists and unique is simply exists followed by an exclamation mark. For example, if we say the set A contains A, B, and C, and if we know that all the elements in A are natural numbers, we can simply say for every x in A, x is a natural number. 
If we want to say, or if we are sure that one of the elements of A has a particular property, we can say that there exists an element Y in A, such that Y is greater than this number, for example. Let's test uh, our understanding. If a set A has all these numbers, and set B has all these numbers, and C has these numbers, let's see, is are the following statements true or fa false? First, is B an element of A? This is false, because B is a set and A is a set. So we cannot say that B is an element of A. Is B a subset of A? 2, 4, and 20. 2, 4, and 20 also exist in A. So this is true. B is a subset of A. Next statement. Every element in A for every X in A. X is also in B. That is not true, because I have the element 10 in A that is not in B. So this is not correct. Next, for every element in B, for every x in B, x is also in A. Is that true? 2, 4, and 20 exist in A as well. So this is true. There exists an element in A such that this element is also in C. Indeed, I have 1 and I have 1. So this is true. There exists a unique element x in A such that x is also in C. Let's see. I have 1. That is true. That is unique because... The other element in C is 40, is not in A, so there exists one unique element in A that is also in C. Finally, there exists an element X in C, such that X is also in B. Is that true? I have 1 and 40. B has 2, 4, and 20. None of the elements in C are in B, so this last statement is wrong. I can define the set of ordered pairs uh, from two sets by the symbol. Uh, times. So when I say when A is a set containing those three elements and B is a set containing those two elements, then the set C that's equal to the ordered pairs from A and B can be written as A times B, which is basically the set of uh, each element in C has the form A comma B, the ordered pair A and B, with the properties A comes from the cap from the set A and B comes from the set B. Therefore, for this particular example, C, the elements in C have these four, where 1 is, comes from A, 4 comes from B, 1 comes from A, 5 comes from B, and so on. We can use that set of ordered pair sign to define the plane, which is the ordered pair R times R, or R squared, which is basically the set of ordered pairs A, B, where A and B are both real numbers. Similarly, R3, or R cubed, which is R times R times R, or which is R squared times R, is the set. Each element has three components, X, Y, Z. Each component is a real number. When I define a function, a function has to be defined from a set where it gives me elements in another set. For example, if the set A is 1 to 3, and let's say I have a function that takes the elements in A and gives me the square of those elements, to properly define F, we say F is defined on A and gives me natural numbers such that F of X is equal to X squared. Or I can define it by saying F is defined on X, which is an element of A, and it's mapped to X squared, which is an element of the natural numbers. Notice the difference between this arrow and this arrow. This arrow is used to define functions from sets to sets. This arrow is used to map elements from one set to elements from another set. These three arrows are used to indicate uh, the relationship between two statements. The first means statement 1 and statement 2 are equivalent. The second one means statement 1 implies statement 2. And the third one means statement 2 implies statement 1. For example, A is equal to 1, 2, 3. This implies that A is a subset of N. B is the set of interval of real numbers between 0 and 1. This implies that B is a subset of R. C is a subset of A. 
This implies that for every element in C, this element is also in A. Also, we see that the, if we start from the right hand side, every element in C, this element is also in A, also implies that C is a subset of A, and therefore we have the equivalence of the two statements. Vectors are defined as elements of two or three or n dimensional vector spaces. So x as an element of R3, x has three components. We do not differentiate between column representation, row representation. We can also sometimes use the curly brackets only because we're using Mathematica. And Mathematica, when it defines vectors, it defines vectors using the curly brackets. A general element of x is designated xi, where xi is the ith component of x, and this implied in the statement that i takes the values 1, 2, or 3. A matrix m in the space of all the matrix, the 3 by 3 matrices takes that square form, and mij is the component on the ith row and jth con of m, and in the statement i and j, it's implied that i and j take values 1, 2, or 3. So i and j take values 1, 2, or 3. Two more symbols that we are going to be using. The first is called the Kronecker delta. Delta ij is a function of i and j. Depending on the values of ij, delta ij gives me either 1 or 0. If i is equal to j, it gives me 1. If i is not equal to j, it gives me 0. And usually i and j are between 1 and 3. Therefore, I have delta 1, 1 is equal to delta 2, 2 is equal to delta 3, 3 is equal to 1. All the other components or all the possible uh, values for delta is 0 whenever i and j are not equal. Finally, the last uh, symbol that we're talking, going to be talking about is called the alternator. Epsilon i, j, k is a function of i, j, and k. Depending on what values I'm using for i, j, k, this gives me either 1, negative 1, or 0. If any of i, j, and k are repeated, so for example, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 3, the value is 0. If i and j, k is a cyclic permutation of 1, 2, and 3, so for example, 1, 2, 3, or 2, 3, 1, or 3, 1, 2, then this symbol gives me 1. If i, j, and k are an uncyclic permutation of 1, 2, 3, then I get a negative 1.